Hi children. Good morning. Welcome to e-class. Children, we have completed the previous lesson methods of separating materials, isn't it? So now we are going to know how to measure. That is a new topic to you. Let's see talk about in the generally in our uh, surrounding what happens. Is it necessary to measure the materials or objects? That is the first point. Am I clear? So, when we go to a shop of the clothes, we like so much the clothes or a difference or they, and we used to uh, catch the clothes, and when we observe the different kinds of the clothes are there, and we love the a shop of the clothes, isn't it? Especially occasions and your birthday celebrations also for the days. So before we are going to give the stitching, isn't it? Tyler saw. So let's see why the shopkeeper or the person used to be measured with the metal rod. Have you observed any time? So wherever you go, the clothes shop. They used to be observed when we observe them. They used to be uh, metal scales there. Through that scale or metal scale, metal rod is there. With that, they used to be measure and they will cut the cloth and they will give to us. I mean, clear. The second part. Why? Why you are going to mother along with your mother? We observe the male. A uh, flowers, flowers while they are uh, giving to us, you know, flower uh, strips or flower strings. They used to be uh, measured with their hands, whether uh, palms or the uh, what we call hands, isn't it? Why this different methods people are using? That is the first thing. Second one, have you observed that? Or have you identified whether is this both also correct or not? Which is the correct one? Whether in the clothes metal rod is the correct measurement or with the hand, isn't it? So let's just see with your friends or you are in the present in your house now. Let's see observe with your. Uh, Family members, ask your family members and catch their hands and just uh, just observe with the table and note down the whatever the measurements you have taken, how many uh, spans are there, count and just write. And identify whether all this your mothers, fathers, if your grandparents are there, they. Uh, spans also just count and just write down. After you just observe their differences. Am I clear? That is the first one. Second one, why was a metal scale used to measure the length of the flow? So that is our question mark. What is the question mark? Why was a Meter scale used to measure the length of the flow. So that you have to uh, remember after completing the your task. Second one, why did the woman use her hand to measure the length of the uh, rose, uh, jasmine, uh, flower string? Isn't it? So that is the second one. Why did the woman use her hand? To measure the length of the jasmine flower strings, so these two also we have to note down and identify, and just to compare with what you measured from your parents' hand spans, and which is the correct one, we can identify the first thing. See children, which method is the correct? Whether this method or this one. Either one, first one or second one. Uh, metal rod or 
with the hand strength or with the hand or foot also, isn't it? So these are the measurements are uh, there, isn't it? These are the measurements are there. Let's see these measurements are how we are applicable in our daily life. How we are applicable in our daily life. How we are using in our daily life. Let's see. Isn't it? That is a, a second thing. Now let's see the standard units before we are going to know about that. We have to know the story of the measurements. Why the olden days they used to be uh, only hand span or foot or arms when they used to be measured. What is happened? We'll see in the next class. Am I clear? So this is the very very important and we have to observe the things that's enough. And we have to do the task. Isn't it? So our lesson is let us measure. Isn't it? We have to measure and we have to find out which method is a correct one. Am I clear to that? Okay, let's see. The cubit. The cubit was used by early Egyptians uh, when they were building the pyramid. The cubit is the measure from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger when your arm is extended and your palm is flat. It's even mentioned in the Bible that Noah's Ark was 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. What's the problem with this system? Well, if you're building on one side of the ark and Noah's building on the other side of the ark and you have different size arms, one side is going to be larger than the other. The fathom. The fathom was used by seamen to measure the depth of water so that the boats would not run aground and be stranded. So uh, going up and down the Mississippi River, uh, they actually, two fathoms is about 12 feet deep and they call it a Mark Twain. And so Samuel Clements heard the river boats going up and down the river and the captains would be yelling out Mark Twain and he ended up stealing that name as his name when he was writing Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Uh, the fathom is the measure from your fingertip to your fingertip when your arms are stretched out sideways. So an arm span from fingertip to fingertip as far as your arms could go. The hand span, the hand span was used as the height of a horse and people still describe horses as being so many hands high. Uh, so you s extend your palm out, you open up your hand as much as it can be, and a hand span is from the tip of your pinky to the tip of your thumb. And the, the height of a horse is measured when their front hoof is down from their hoof all the way up to their shoulder blade. Um, a normal horse would be between 15 and 16 hands high, um, but it's really strange because if you're dead center between 15 and 16, it's not 15.5, it's 15.2 hands high for some reason. The pace. This term was used by the Roman army to judge speed, and the term is still used frequently during different types of foot races. The pace is the measure of the distance from one step to another. We still use the pace in the American system of measurements we use. Uh, the mile comes from the Roman word for mil pasos, which is a thousand paces. So a mile was a thousand of the biggest steps you could take. And so if you're running your mile, um, it should take you a thousand steps. But when you run, you can actually cover more ground. The foot was standardized by King Henry I because his foot was actually what we call a foot is is 12 inches long they took his foot they broke it up into 12 equal parts um, but it's a really weird system because it was the actual length of an individual's foot and so if a king became a king when he was like 12 years old his feet might not have stopped growing so by the time he was 18 or 24 and they would redo the maps they would have to change all of the measurements the girth, this is one of my favorite. The girth is used uh, to measure fishing line. It's, it's used on ships. The girth was the measurement around your stomach. And so my girth is quite large. You would take a piece of rope and you would twirl around and every time it passed your navel, your belly button, um, that would be one girth, two girths, three girths. 
the palm is kind of like a handspan, but your fingers are together. And it's just across the four fingers that you have there. So the palm is the width of your four fingers when they are placed together. Now, some folks found measuring in this fashion to be quite challenging. Today, you are going to measure some things around the classroom using these non-standards units. You're going to be crawling across the floor. Uh, you and your partner are going to be measuring things, and you need the information from them as well. So take a look at your worksheet before you get started. Figure out what items you actually need to measure around the room, and then get to measuring.